I had a similar neck thing to you, to you oh, a little yeah? while ago, and the, the hardest thing to do was like to uh, make that initial move in the morning. Yeah, it's like, terrible. Like I couldn't, I had to negotiate like how to get <laughs> up properly. <laughs> Man. White Paragorgia with so in there. Let's see up. Do you think we'll come across any more tunicates? Uh, yeah, for sure. I don't think we got it, yeah, at this depth. I think it was a bit shallower. Yeah, I think so too. But we did so get one. So if we see one. another, we, we can certainly try to grab. Yeah. Um, another mushroom coral to the left. Whoa. Oh. Or really. Woo. <laughs> Trying to rock me to sleep here. I so know, it's ah. really <laughs> not healthy. That is the one <laughs> no, good thing seriously. about here. It rocks you to sleep like a baby. <laughs> is that the one good thing? Oh, it's talked crinoid. Uh, it's one of the many good things. One of the many good things. We're like getting to see coral. But yeah, I really sponges. like that. I am into into the falling asleep. It's nice once Ooh, you. Ooh, is there a Chrysogorgia geniculata like way in the back over there? Oh, what are you after? Uh, uh that. Yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's another one of the Farinimidid sponges. Okay. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah, it probably is. Just but there could be some cool stuff over here. Oh, yeah. Huh? Actually, looks. I don't know. It's different. hard to tell from here. In the shadows. Lots of uh, speculation. Crinoid <laughs> there, small one. Looks like a different one. Well, let's see. Oh yeah, no, maybe it is genicula geniculata. Back, back to the original. <laughs> yes, it is. That's uh, bottle brush. Hooray! Chrysogorgid. That is spelled like this. Chrysogorgia geniculata. There you go. Go ahead and zoom. I think that's the first one we've seen so far on this dive. That's good, thank you. Oh, I love the little squat lobsters so hanging cute. out in there. How big would you say those squat lobsters are? They look tiny from here. They are super small. Really small. They're very small. I don't know, like one centimeter bodies, one and a half centimeter, and then mm -hmm. long arms. So cute. Yep. Little crinoids, too, looking at the uh, still cam pictures. Lots of little stuff. Ooh, and some like worm tubes. Yep. See, now the pictures aren't uploading, like, ASAP. Oh, they it, it only pulls them, like, every 15, 20 minutes or something. Hmm, okay. Oh, you mean they're not, they're not, uh... They were just, like, going. You mean they're not sh appearing? Oh, no, okay. no, 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 I mean that they weren't. When you say, like, uploading, you mean when they get pulled off of this? Correct. Or do you mean, oh, okay. They were, like, ASAP in the beginning. Maybe it's getting clogged up or something, I'm not sure. Shouldn't be, usually we're yeah. taking way more than this. Right. To my knowledge, they pull regularly on a cycle at around, I think it's like every 15 minutes, okay. but maybe we were just timing it well at that time. Perhaps. Stocked, crinoid, very small. And this is confusing. Oh, I guess, yeah, so now we're on this weird side of a hill thing. Yeah. yeah. Traversing. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty much what we have in Zoe point four. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, so like the next watch gets... Yeah, they're going to get that waypoint five to six Man. hill. Well... 
looks exciting. Yeah, that does look It's going to be steeper oh, and shallower. Man. Yeah, they're a ways away That'll, from that, though. They yeah. got some. They got to suffer first, too. Boring <laughs> stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does their time. <laughs> <laughs> when are we, uh, what, did, does anyone remember what the updated recovery time was for this? Yeah, uh, like eight it was time? worked r wonderfully oh, for sorry. us. Like, we get all the next dive, and it's, what is it? Eight or nine in the evening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like okay. eight, I think, if they, oh, okay. they put in it. For the next dive. Wahoo! Yeah, night, eight, 8 p.m., I think. But recovery oh. for this was, let's see, is it, was it 8 a.m.? I don't remember, I didn't look. For no this idea. dive? Yeah, or was it 8 4? 8 p.m. I thought it was It's late, 8 p.m. Yeah. for this dive? Yeah. Isn't it a 24 hour? Yeah, they oh, went we're in gonna, at, they we're going to skirt through this then. and said it would be yeah. 23 hours. We launched yeah. at 9. We, so. uh, we went. We're already almost halfway through. <laughs> our, we're more than halfway through our waypoints. <laughs> I guess when there's um, lots to see, yeah. time That's flies true. I mean, fun. usually like sampling yeah, we're no, we takes didn't a sample, long time. Right? Right. Yeah. Well, we have nine waypoints. Yeah, so we have nine waypoints, but distance-wise, we're oh, over distance halfway wise. through. Um, That's also. yeah. Yeah, so maybe it'll be cut short. Maybe if it'll it be cut short, or maybe there'll just be lots of exciting stuff up there, and we'll yeah. take take our sweet time. We'll get right. to watch it. In the yeah, we'll get to watch yeah, we'll everybody to else watch experience it. <laughs> Until it's our watch. Oh yeah, Yeah, we got one more. I'm really, I'm really hoping we see a cephalopod at some point. No other watch did. If we could zoom on, I know you're positioning. That was yeah. a very strange one. It yeah, almost like it didn't look there. like one, a yeah. uh, cephalopod, but. It was hugging itself. Oh, is that a, no, it's a rock. Sorry. No, it's <laughs> something. Octopus? No, I thought it was like <laughs> a wormy, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. No wormy. There's a crinoid, number of crinoids here next to the. It's a big brazingid. It's huge. Oh, yeah. It's like 50 centimeters across, arm to arm. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's the crinoid right hey, next zoom to in. it. Yes, correct. Okay. Unstalked. Versus this here, it's a. Uh, in the center, it's a sea star. Yep. Cool. Yes. Which is very different from what we've been seeing um, in other dives. We've been seeing a lot of stalked crinoids, and this one we have not. So That's a cool shot. Yeah. Great side shot. Yep. Nice. Yeah, so they're highlight. feeding like this. They put their arms up into the current and they use them like Velcro trap stuff, which is an interesting thing that this. Um, family does. How do you spell the name of this? I Same think. as before, the, or that was the all eyes, and the, the J is the G. Brisingid. Brisingid. Not Brisingid. Brisingid. Hello. Or with an I. Bris. Do you want to try and get a shot in the still camera, or, or move on? Brisingid. Yes. Cool. I'm learning how to spell. <laughs> it's okay. There is something. How do you remember all these names for these different species? And it, especially when they sound so f similar to each other. Um, repetition. <laughs> uh, full wide. Yep. Lots of repetition. Practice makes perfect. Lots of time. I'm telling you, at the beginning of this cruise, it was it was over for me. <laughs> if Lila wasn't here, I, yeah. But with time, with mentorship, with practice, yep. with staring at a screen for eight hours a day. I'm trying to follow along the best I can, too. Yeah, it's fun. It is. And for those of you at home that are curious to follow along, a uh, good way to help with the species ID is to go on Ocean Exploration from NOAA. Oh, they have a link. Slope? Sorry. No, you're good. They have a link to Benthic Deep Water Animal Identification. 
and you can find Ooh, many of the animals that we come across on these dives down here. Mm. Some sort of something sticking. If we can zoom in there. Yeah. Just a lone little something. I'll try and get your still camera in there. Aw, thanks. Get the, this is a nice, flat, <laughs> simple bottom. Why not? Ooh. Oh yeah, that looks like, ooh, so one-sided. Okay. But then Finally you like the lose background. the top of it. Ah, that's annoying. Yeah. That's all right. Okay, yeah. I am so handing over to Brian. Looks like Can there's something leave, tucked underneath that Good rock back there. I'll see you in a second. Yeah, there is something the under mess. there. Yeah. Um, is this a C pen here? Yeah, the, it is a bamboo. Zoom in there. Uh, it's a bamboo for sure. Um, blah, 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 blah. Everything is escaping me. Okay. Let's look at this. Still a bit underexposed, but pretty good. Oh, and there's some sort of something in the background. Oh yeah, definitely bamboo. Yep. Um, actually, I might have a better C pen. Um, actually. Yep. C pen. Not sure which type though. Penatulacia order. Uh, Baltasina, Steve says. Hey. Warning. But yeah, yeah, we don't get a chance. Good Check shot. out the whatever is under that rock back uh, there. Thanks. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, gonna... full wide. Let's yep. go look under the rock. Yeah. And so I'm going to pass it off to the SPL to our next SCF science communication fellow, Katie. And you all have fun with her on our next watch. Oh, I don't know if she told you, but our slurp is gone. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Zoom in there. Okay. Oh, a sea star. Uh, a sea star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That sea star is really up in yeah. there. Look at those two feet. All right. It's 4 a.m. I'm going to okay, bed. Okay, full wide. Good night. Uh, Good night, everyone. Catch up to. Atalanta. Video watch change. Like what you can see. I brought, I exercised it out every which way. 
Christian. It's about 2.1, 2.09 degrees oh, Celsius. Yeah. Huh. Celsius, according to the CTD. It's pretty cold. It's usually, yeah, it's between close. like two and four on most of our dives. Close to freezing. Mm -hmm. Does it ever get um, at or below freezing on, on some dives, depending on how deep we go? What was that? Does it ever get at or below freezing on, on any of our dives, depending on how deep we go? Like in previous dives? Uh, no. Not. I don't think I've ever seen anything under one or two degrees Celsius. Yeah. Quarrels. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Kind of hard to change that uh that uh, that te for that temperature to get much cooler mm -hmm. and yeah. w without it being in contact with really cold air, which is why in Antarctica, the seawater in the surface can be minus two degrees Celsius, because mm -hmm. there it's 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 close to very cold mm -hmm. air temperature and is salty and so can therefore get below freezing. Mm -hmm. Something something yeah. thermocline. That's interesting because that act, that I assume gets marginally warmer as you oh. go deeper, right? Oh. In Antarctica? Yeah, or in the Arctic, like if you have this wind, like related right, cold yeah. on the surface, right? Yeah, and well, and that's what causes like the, the like overturning is that kind of balance between if it's colder and denser, then it starts to sink. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Ooh, we're in pillow basalt <coughs> world. Is that what they're called? Are these pillow basalts? Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. When I first um, started doing ROV work, it was off the coast of Newfoundland for uh -huh. like oil and gas stuff. And I remember there was one winter, it was oh. like very cold. Oh. And uh, by the time the ROV would be on the deck, like when you took it out of the water, yeah. be freezing the whole over. front, it would all be like sea ice. Oh my like gosh. The whole front of it hanging off the arms. It would just be like ice would be forming by the time before you put it down. That's wild. Looks like a coral with some yeah, sort of like associate. Yeah, like a tiny... Maybe like corral. minus 40 wind chill or something like that. Wow, that is brutal. That's wild. Yeah, That's what's crazy. in here? Zoom in. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, wait, yeah. Oh. Looks it similar is another to something we've small seen. Cor corallid, I think. Whoa, with I the just, uh, just looking in the still camera. Scary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> rock, sure. Rock right at it. Oh, uh, <laughs> did you get enough of the zoom? Yeah, you want another one? Ooh, that's all right. Okay. We got a good picture. Yeah, definitely a corallium, I, don't, I think. Yeah, I don't that's think really it looks knobbly enough to be bubblegum. Oh, and look, that's there's a, a little, stalk. little sponge, a little something. Well, maybe that's a worm, I think. Ooh. Big awesome. stocked crinoid. Lots of little sponges on this. Oh, and there's some tunicates. Yeah. Yeah, when you zoom in, you can see some whole lot more, lot lots of little life. Yes. On, on that rock. Oh. And What's Earth. that? Is that a sea star upper left here? Yeah. Ooh. Take a look at that and quick. Big one. It's different than what we've seen so far. Kind of looks Brzezinged esque again. Yeah. Do, okay, have we gotten any of these? Do we care to take any uh, of these? Zoom in. Um, this would be a nice I highlight. think we have collected one. We have collected a okay. Brzezinged, yeah. yeah. Not okay. on this dive, but. Okay. Um, yep, another one. Yep. Oh, shoot. It's that we did not stay attacked when we got it back, but yeah. Uh, nice, thank you. Okay, right. we've got images. Do you mind helping me spell the name for this? B-R-I-S-I-N-G. B-R-I-S-I-N-G. All eyes, brizinged. The J is a G. Resinged, got it. Yep. Well, 
anemone. Or, Ooh. wait, maybe uh. it's a mushroom coral. It's a mushroom coral, actually. <gasps> Yay. Heteropolypus. Oh, wait. And the yeah. crisis. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, and a. Go ahead and zoom in. And a. Um, this. Below it. Uh, I don't know what you are. Another Bazinjin? I don't know. I can't tell. No, it looks. Uh, I don't know. There's a. Sh wow. Oh, is oh. there a squat lobster up in the crisis? I think yeah. so, yeah. Squat lobsters. Ooh, look at those polyps. Oh, they're so, so cute, the way they move around. <laughs> wow. Oh. Nice. We saw something. Thank <laughs> you, that's good. <laughs> we also saw oh, two worms, I believe, around. There's more to them. Wow. So, uh, come okay. up on Ooh. Atlanta oh. there. Another anemone. A little anemone. steep part. Anemone. Mm. Right. Oh, oh something ooh. just flew by. Shrimp. Um, another anemone. Yep. Okay. We're getting there. I know. So close. So I don't know, crawl. guys. I think this we're, is it. We're, we're almost on at it. the top <laughs> of the hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. We can dream. If we do a quick left and right turn, is there anything looming in the distance? Just curious. I know you got to drive and see, too. Just a little part here. Oh. Wow. Wow, there's really just like, even on this mm. steep slope, there's I would think that there would be steep. so much more here. Yeah. I'm really curious as to how much little stuff there is. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of little stuff. Every time we've sat Which down, you know, there's way more than it seems like there is. Yeah, I wonder if that makes sense because of the high current in a way. Closer to the boundary layer somehow is like good enough and yeah, like they don't enough to not to be blown away. Yeah, they don't need to grow that tall. Yeah. Or something. Interesting. Wow. This is a desolate dive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is interesting. Oh, we're it's almost so at empty. How far is waypoint four from here? That we're is to Gorgia to the left, but we don't need to uh, zoom in. Like four hundred meters? No, more than that. Four fifty. Oh. Not so far. <laughs> I always have to remind myself that this is a slope. I keep thinking the camera is tilted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it kind of hard to. Adjust to. Yeah, I didn't realize that the first couple. Yeah, of this watches. just got steep pretty suddenly. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's very steep. It's real steep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're 500 meters from waypoint four. Okay. Thanks. Oh, that was a. Oh, there's a little. Oh yeah. Oh, there's Something. A anemone down there. Yeah. So little. Oh, and There's another one. big mushroom coral. That looks kind of like Tahinotus. Mushroom coral. Oh, and off in the back left is another thing to look at after. Almost like a Rigadrella oh, sponge or something. Oh, yeah. This what family is this? this can be Go quick. ahead it's and zoom. This is Heteropolypus, but it's probably still under Anthemastus there. Oh, yep, definitely is. Uh, Actually, and I think it's Tahinotus. That's good there. And then before we run away too much, if we okay. uh, could look at full wide, and then the other the one was left. yeah, Same not the little fan, but um, yeah, more to the Big. left there was another thing if you yeah, 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 more yeah. to the left yeah yep. pi pivot a little looks like another one of those that. Sponges. oh yeah yeah oh it is another one of those sponges oh, okay nice. and something in the background too i think yeah another, Could be another coral or a sponge yeah Let's see what's in the back there i 
Oh, is that a black coral right behind it? Oh. Uh, to the left? Yeah, let's, that's, let's that looks like that. a pathy yes. It does look like that, the pathies. Oh. Trying to get the still camera in there. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, it works well. Ooh. Wow, this really looks like a Mufa. Oh, wow. Oh, Look at that too rock. Low. Oh, that's all right. So let's say we can yeah. move along if to the If we could bathy zoom on the yeah, bathopathies. Okay. Looks like there's a couple right here. One in the background, and then I don't know what that was on the left. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and zoom. Uh, yeah. Just at a frame on your left and still cam, you can probably oh. see the other coral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not that we run into it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and look at all this debris floating. It's pretty awesome. Yep. Definitely bath pathies there. And then if we have a second to look at that little white fan to the left. Okay, full wide. That one there, yep. We're getting more biological. <laughs> Less geological. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. There's still a lot of rocks. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. That's pretty neat. Ooh. Uh, zoom in. It oh. looks like it's mm. that overgrown with a zoanthid, but it's bubblegum. Yeah, maybe one of the thin white, white bubblegum. White bubblegum. It does look too knobbly to. I don't know. It looks more knobbly than normal corallid. Yeah. But those are the ones that are just so difficult to tell apart. Right. Can we zoom just a wee bit more? I like the massive brittle stars. <laughs> yeah. That it's like, just is that one over. brittle star? Or, or it looks yeah. like a bunch of them, but then you realize it's just one. Yeah. All right, that's good, thank you. They are really long. It it, it was waving in that current, which makes me think <laughs> bubble gum more. Yeah. Weird white bubble gum. The brittle stars aren't reminding me of uh, curly fries. Focus, it's killing me. I know. It's still cool though. It's a little too far away. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's more also just the yeah distance, like you said. Yeah. Pretty good on every other front though. Mm -hmm. And gets some of the stuff in the back yeah, too. Yeah, that's cool. It's a nice shot. It's fun operating the still cam. I really feel like a photographer. <laughs> Put on LinkedIn as a skill. <laughs> see photography. Request <laughs> that I confirm. <laughs> hey, it's an actual skill. You yeah, posted that's, on that. That's yeah. legit. <laughs> that photography of the undersea. Or something oh, down there. Was, there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I am crashing. We're so close. I know. We're so close. The worst part is I'm going to go try and lay down, yeah. and I'm going to be able to sleep for one hour. And You're going to be like, out. Like 20 out. more minutes. Uh, we just finished our move. Uh, we just finished it, or we're about to finish it in two meters, so.
Dan, while I'm here, can you show me how to get your file account started? Like, we're kicked out of the computer. Somebody the second that I Good morning, everybody that's listening. We are exploring unnamed Geo 123 uh, on the northern part of, way, way north of Kingman Reef, about 100 miles. We dove around 9 p.m. last night, and this is part of a 24-hour deep dive. We have been seeing so much geology tonight. I'm sure Corley is extremely happy, same as Adam. The more geology, the better. So as we're finishing up our shift change, uh, and the four to eight crew is coming in, I want to ask the whole group, like we do every night, tell us about themselves, um, and one question. So inspired by the 12 to 4 shift, I want to ask everybody, what is their favorite SpongeBob creature? Favorite SpongeBob character? So to start it off, my name is Katie Doyle. I am lead science communication fellow. I am from Corpus Christi, Texas, way down south, about two hours north of the Mexican border. Or sorry, two hours north of the Mexican border. And my favorite... SpongeBob character would be the just mass of random nameless fish that just kind of wander in and eat everything and just kind of talk. Coralie, what is your favorite SpongeBob character? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Coralie Rodriguez. I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island's Graduate School of Oceanography. Um, I study rocks. Okay, favorite SpongeBob character? Mm -hmm. There's so many. I know. Uh, maybe the my leg guy. <laughs> I haven't even thought about that one. That's a good one. Good morning, everyone. I'm Brian Kennedy. I'm the 48 watch lead and the expedition's um, biological sciences lead. Um, when I'm not on the boat, I am the chief scientist for the Ocean Discovery League and an affiliate researcher at Boston University. Um, I have never seen an episode of SpongeBob, so I don't think I can name a single character other than SpongeBob. So I'm going to have to pass on this oh, one. Oh, my heart just ached a little bit. Man. Okay, so your favorite character is the standard SpongeBob then. We're just going to go with that. Sure. <laughs> Default answer. 
Uh, hello, my name is Chris Ryan. I'm a data logger here on the Nautilus. And I gotta go with Brian. I have actually never seen an episode of SpongeBob either. So I couldn't name a single character other than SpongeBob. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now you're Patrick Starr. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, what about you? Plankton's one of my favorite characters just because he's always tr scheming to get the Krabby Patty formula. Plankton is one of my favorite ones, too. <laughs> Throwing it down to the first row. What is your favorite SpongeBob character, and if you want to say who you are? Good morning. My name's Dan. I'm sitting in the Herc chair, and I hate SpongeBob. I figured this was better than chocolate, or name your favorite cookie, and then we get hungry for four hours straight. Man. I know hate's a pretty strong word, but I have children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand that, because I do have a hate relationship with Baby Shark, after hearing it every day, eight times a day, like for two years straight. I understand that. Okay, Rin, what about you? Uh... Hello, I'm Ren. I'm in the Atalanta seat. Uh, I like SpongeBob. Very optimistic. I like that. So, what's your favorite character? And it looks like they are right in the middle of a move. So we are going to forget about first row for a few minutes while they can, uh, you know, actually pilot the ROVs. So talking to the part to the watch that we just relieved, it seems like there is not that much biology going on right here. Just a ton of rocks. So Corley, is this all these rocks just exciting you? Is it filling your heart with joy to see nonstop rocks? I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty early. There's not that much that's filling me with joy. <laughs> <laughs> so online, several of the viewers have said that Sandy Squirrel is their favorite, and one person saying Jeff the Fish, which I need to go back and look up Jeff the Fish now. Is that the guy? Oh, I do like this dude, Jeff the Fish. Yeah, he is the my leg guy. So Corley, I think this is yours, Jeff the Fish with my leg. Looks like Dan has found or watched his first coral. It's a Chrysogorgia with a crinoid right behind it. <laughs> that should be the one they sampled already, so I think they got a good look at it. So we have our strong tunicate fan online, hoping to see some more tunicates this dive. Have we seen any tunicates at all this expedition? I have not, no. I think one of the yeah, other watches did. Come down five meters, please. So Cheyenne, if you're ready for it, we have a question online for you. Say that again. Uh, if you're ready for it, we have a question online for you. Sure. Okay, so uh, how do you plot out your course to know where you're going? Yeah, so basically uh, we have a sonar, so we go over the area with the sonar so we know what the depths are. And then we usually plot out a slope of a seamount and some considerations we have is the wind direction. 
our ship can only really move um our ship can, can't can really move laterally very well, so we try to set it up so that the ship is moving either forward or backwards, and our ship, when we're diving, is always pointing into the wind. So we kind of find where the wind is and see if we can pick, that's how we pick the side of the seamount that we go up, and then we just, drop the points and sometimes it's just like a rough plan and it ends up we see something else or we don't see anything very interesting and we end up changing it on the fly but that's a great answer thank you cool thank you shia So Brian, are there deep sea tunicates down here? Oh yeah. Um, the most common we see is what we generally refer to as a predatory tunicate. I forget what its Latin name is, um, but it's a good, fairly good size, and it's got this big gaping mouth, um, and looks like a. I don't even know how to describe it. It almost looks like a trash can, <laughs> a, a transparent trash can, kind of a cylinder with a big giant opening. Um, that it waits, that it filters things through and waits for things to um, come into its mouth. Um, they're kind of cool, but no, I don't, I don't think I've seen one this entire expedition yet. Uh, and you'll see other types of tunicates as well, but that's the kind of one I'm used to seeing the most. Is and so most tunicates aren't they filter feeders? So to find a predatory one is pretty unique, isn't it? You know, I don't know that much about tunicates. Yes, they are primarily filter feeders, and we call this thing a predatory tunicate, but I honestly don't know anything about it beyond that's what we call it. And I'd have to go look up the Latin for it. Um, but there are, pla and they're never very common, but we definitely do see them in other parts of the world uh, at, the, at these depths. They're so pretty though. They come in so many different colors. And uh, I know I've seen them definitely when I've been scuba diving on reefs. Yeah, they're super shallow on, on shallow reefs. I want to double check, but I'm pretty sure uh, a sea squirt that we get all the time in Texas is a tunicate. But now I need to double check. Yes, it is. Woohoo! So these are one of my favorite little critters uh, around Texas because they are part of the fowling community and then you'll pull them up and you can give them like a little poke and then they'll just squirt out water, hence the name sea squirt. And they're so cute, they look like little weird brainy blobs. So they don't have that characteristic tunicate, open mouth, side mouth kind of thing. Oh, we finally have our first Patrick Star fan online. I was wondering, I feel like Patrick is everybody's favorite. So I was surprised we hadn't had one yet. So we do have a question that I think I want to know the answer to as well. Can cor do corals die of old age? Do they have a lifespan or is it only from outside influences that cause corals to die? Being colonial organisms, they, I think that those kind of understandings are a little strange um, because you can, um, you know, individual polyps die all the time, but the whole organism um, can live, I don't think has the same kind of aging process since they're colonial. Um, you can also, you know, they can die back 
and another same species can recolonize the same skeleton um, potentially and it'd be hard to tell in the in the fossil record of the reef that it was you know one point or if it was short enough that it was unoccupied so I think the kind of the definition of the organism as a whole would be a little different than we look at when we think about like with mammals that's a rat tail or a grenadier that we were just looking at that was a really good answer I was like I don't know the answer to this please please tell me more So this is our third dive on this feature. Uh, our first two dives have been um, shallower. Uh, we did a, a dive on the east side and a dive on the west side. Actually, the west side first, then the east side. And now we're back on the west side, but much deeper. Um, we're not exactly the same, below the same place we started on the seamount. Um, it's a little bit further um, to the west and to the north than the little summit features. Um, that dive was an, a really amazing amount of life. Um, and so it's kind of, it's pretty interesting to me to, to come down to this depth where usually we do see a, a lot of corals um, and, uh, and find it so devoid of life when we're um, really not that far away from the 1500 meter dive we did or 1300 meters that was just chock full of um, all kinds of, um, different animals. And this will be our last dive on this feature. Um, once we recover the vehicle, we will head about 50 miles um, to the northeast to another unnamed seamount. I don't think a single seamount we're working on. Um, this cruise um, will um, has a name. So the other night you talked to us about 
how hard it is, the, the long lengthy process it takes to name a seamount or to name an underwater feature. Do you think that w if this area gets National Marine Sanctuary, uh, they're going to start the process of naming a lot of these seamounts? Yeah, I would expect that they would um, probably do that, yes. And then follow-up question. Do you think that it's going to be, uh, since there was no indigenous tribe that was staying at Palmyra or Kingman long term, do you think it's going to be in an indigenous language or like from a Polynesian culture? Or if it's going to be like your standard um, named after some explorer? Like an Anglo, Anglo one, like Mount Denali, or sorry, Mount McKinley. I don't know. Um, and um, yeah, I don't really know. Um, I know that part of the push when there was a lot of um, discussion about a monument expansion, um, one of the requests was to rename the monument um, um, in a more traditional name. Um, so I think that would likely be the goal um, of a lot of people is to see these features n named in, in, in a respectful way of one of the p different cultures that were transited this area. So something but more along the lines of Papahana Mokuakea, the naming out there? That would be my assumption. Um, there are multiple different cultures out here um, that all would have transited this area at different points. So I suspect you'd have a couple different cultures, languages to, to work into the mix. Dan, when you get sit situated, we'd like to go look at some of the sea pens in the sand channel. All right. So we have been on the ship for 11 days now. What is everybody's favorite thing to do while on board? Is it puzzles? Is it sleep? Is it be on SPL? Is it hanging out with all the cool people? What did you say? Chris, since Corley's uh, trying to work on her computer screen, what's your favorite thing to do while being on the boat? Uh, well, sleeping's pretty high up there. Yeah, it's really <laughs> great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something about just laying in your bunk and just chilling is also really, really amazing. I really enjoy being up on top of the bridge, the highest point of the ship we can safely get, um, and just the feel of being at sea. Uh, honestly, especially at night, um, I like being up there. I really thought you were going to be like lying in my fancy cabin in the really nice chairs that are so comfy with the mood lighting. Okay. <laughs> 
Coralie, what's your favorite thing to do while out at sea? I do like sleeping. I feel like sleeping is pretty easy out here with the boat rocking so much. Yes, 100% agree. Um, but I also like, like what was it? Not yesterday, but the day before when like everyone was just watching the sunset off the back of the boat. Um, I like doing that, watching the sunset. It's very nice. Yeah, that was really great. All of us just came together because we don't often have everybody off. And since we weren't diving, we were just able to hang out on the tepid tub. Dara, what's your favorite thing to do while, off, while out here? You're uh, playing games with other people on ship or playing some either the puzzles or the or the card game that we sometimes get to play. But oh. my most favorite thing that I get to do is brought my gaming laptop with me mm -hmm. and I play Assassin's Creed Black Flags. It's great because you actually kind of get the like a realistic waves from the game itself because when you're on the ship itself, it's pretty cool to have that kind of 4D kind of feeling. Because you, when you're hitting a wave on the game itself, you're actually feeling it in person. It's like, whoa, this is pretty cool. I feel like that would make me seasick. I would be nauseous with that. So this is a um, <coughs> prototypium, um, which is a sea pen we've, we've documented pretty well over here. So I think we're good here. Can you look at the Umbalula to the left real quick? And this is Umbalula, um, or, or one of my favorites. Um, we've been seeing these a f decent amount during this expedition. Um, all right, science is happy. Thanks. So there's a third uh, group of sea pens we've been seeing or seen earlier in this dive, and that's the third one's the one we're really looking for, looking for right now that we want to get a better look at. Those two, we know what they are. So Lynette, question to you. What is your favorite thing to do while being on the boat? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a little bit late to watch today, so you sleeping. might guess that sleeping is my <laughs> favorite. Um, so, so far sleeping has been the resounding <laughs> answer. Sleeping's up there, but Dude, those puzzles, those puzzles are hard and they suck you in. They pull they, you in. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even check on the puzzle this morning, but I feel like it probably got finished last night. It did. Man, yeah. how many more of those puzzles do we have? Do I we have, have no enough? idea. They just keep coming. Yeah. I know they're up in the Nemo lounge, but how many? Because they're big puzzles. So for those online, we have like these really nice um they're called liberty puzzles or nemo puzzles so they're like cut out on cardboard or sorry not cardboard they're cut out on actual wood instead of cardboard and they're really nice they have these really intricate shapes that you're not going to find with the standard thing with the standard puzzle and then you can't use a actual picture of the puzzle to figure out what it looks like so the whole time you're putting it together you don't know what it is Dan, what's your favorite thing to do while off? Steve, is this the one you were looking for? Nope, nope, that's not the one we're looking for. Okay. Thank you, that's all we need. <laughs> so, Dan, what's your, or sorry, go ahead. Go I was just going to say, um, so while so far this has not been the most animally life uh, dive. This is an hotly diverse place for sea pens. Uh, we're just racking up the species of sea pens here as we're moving along. Um, so it's low abundance, but relatively high um, 
diversity in terms of sea pens, which is unusual. Usually we see one or two species in an area. Is this a little black coral or no? No, that's also another sea pen. So that, that species number five of sea pens in the last like 50 meters. He's got something swimming around it. Like yep, a little looks a little shrimp. amphipod or shrimp. Yep. All right, we're good with this one. Thanks. Let's go keep racking up sample sea, uh, sea pens. And they still haven't gotten a second look at the one that we're having trouble identifying. Darrow, you got a viewer saying that you should play subnautical or nautica. Subnautica, that is a good game. I haven't got to, sadly, I didn't have pre downloaded on the ship. We don't have enough bandwidth to download things while we're here. So I wish I had one of those games I wish I got to play here while I was on board. But yes, Subnautica is a good choice. Thank you. Is that the one where you're like a scuba diver and you just kind of scuba dive around and explore? Pretty much. You crash land on a, an escape pod, and then from there you got to build your base, underwater base, to slowly um, escape the island eventually. It's a pretty cool game, and it's a pretty cool storyline. Awesome. I know that uh, previously they had some kind of exploration underwater game, which was so beautiful. Right, I'm pretty sure that's not the one we're looking at, looking for. So we can move on. Thanks. some unique bed form formations or bed form arrangements so the one on the right side where it more, looks more like it's in one direction and then the one on the left side where it's going the opposite way it looks like Brian, what is the coolest thing that you would like to see on this dive? Like an, a Dumbo octopus laying an egg on a coral, or what is something that you're just like, man, if this could happen, that would be so awesome. I, we're probably too shallow for it to happen at this point, but there is a, a deep water species of octopus um, that is not scientifically described, but we've seen it enough times across Nautilus, Falcor, and Okeanos that we're, we've got a we're all pretty comfortable that it's a new species, likely a new genus, and maybe even a new family. Um, and it's been seen a handful of times now, um, but one's never been collected, so it's really hard to expand upon the taxonomy. And we saw it first in the Hawaiian Islands in 2015 on an expedition I was on. Um, and I'd love to be able to collect one so we could actually get a better sense of what it is and where it fits in the tree of life. 
Um, I think they've been seen eight or nine, ten times at this point across this area in the Pacific. They're <clears throat> the uh, deepest recorded insurate octopus, um, meaning most of the deep water octopuses have flaps, fins on their head that swim like the Dumbos. Uh -huh. um, and the insurates who don't have head flaps don't get found this deep, uh, except for this ghost octopus or Casper, um, as it's been nicknamed. <clears throat> and I would really love to see one of those and potentially get a chance to collect it. Since our slurp isn't working on this dive, this would not be a good dive to do that because we wouldn't <laughs> be able to collect one. Um, but um, the, the, taxonomically, these things are probably fascinating. Um, and they're really freaking cute, too. And that was my next question. How do you sample such a large invertebrate? Well, these are kind of small. They're only five, six centimeters across. Um, but that's one of the reasons we haven't sampled one is it's really freaking hard to capture a mobile creature that's um, at least somewhat intelligent. So we may not be able to um, at all. It might have to remain a deep sea mystery. Yep, for quite an amount of time. And they're very soft bodied and um, probably um, fragile. So like they're not gonna get caught in nets or anything like that in a way we could that would be useful for science. So uh, collection with an ROV is just about our only option right now, probably. Um, but that just may not be possible. It is a, it's amazing when you think about so, m so much of what we know about the deep sea was from net trawls and different kind of baited traps and things like that over the decades that it's really only within the last, say, 20 years or so with the such an increase in the frequency of ROV and submarine observations out here that these soft-bodied organisms are beginning to be documented in any kind of real um, thing. Because if you go, only things that could survive being caught in nets um, really were described. And so as we spend more time looking at uh, the midwater and these softer gelatinous or, or um, you know, very light-bodied organisms um, are really where we know the least about out here. You know, you know, if, uh, if aliens came and described the planet Earth by based on biomass uh, and frequency of life, it would be described as three centimeter long vertebrate fishes and sub 10 centimeter long gelatinous organisms make up the vast majority of the individual organisms on the planet that are larger than bacteria. And those things are extremely hard to sample and study because they're so small and so fragile. As you were saying that, I could just totally picture you giving that same kind of speech to an entire auditorium of graduate students studying deep sea, like patches on the jacket kind of thing. So that was a beautiful speech is what I'm saying. Uh, like I you. loved it. Yeah, it is, it, it is interesting as we think about what we know about the patterns of life on Earth, the biases of our sampling methods and the biases of what we as terrestrial mammals find interesting. Um, and if you look at them systematically, there are huge gaps in our understanding just based on either our sensory perceptions um, or our sampling methods. So one of the ways that I got really good with my uh, fish ID over in the Gulf was pulling up, like when I was working offshore, uh, on regular old recreational deep sea fishing boats that we would pull up behind a shrimp boat and there would just be, we would collect their trash, quote unquote, and then we they would just give us like a, a shrimp basket full of the random creatures that they had collected. And that really helped me get good about my deep sea or my fish ID. Like, oh, there's a sea pan. Oh, there's a lizard fish, bat fish. What is a cowfish doing all the way out here?
So you're right. All those uh, those trawl nets, there's they tell us so much, but so so destructive. So because it is 4.30 in the morning, our time, and also because we had a viewer ask a the question, what is your favorite type of coffee? Mine is plain Jane black coffee. does not have to be fancy. It can be cold. It can be hot. I just need something, like I need that dose of caffeine to wake me up. In the summer, I really like um, espresso tonics. What is, I have never heard of that. Please, please tell me what an espresso tonic is. It's a shot of espresso with tonic water. And it sounds weird, but it's really, really refreshing when it's really hot outside. What is tonic water? Is that like cucumber water? You've never had tonic water before? No. It's kind of like, um, it's like a carbonated water, but it's a little bit, it has like a little sweetness oh. to it. Oh, 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 just like plain Jane carbonate water like it's not plain have you never had like a gin and tonic or something i've heard of it i mean i've seen them on the shelves yeah they're it's it's sweeter than it has like sugar so it's sweeter than regular seltzer water okay but it is carbonated i don't know how to describe it better than so express it with some tonic water it has like a flavor to it um but yes brian what's your favorite coffee don't drink coffee Okay, never mind, skipping right past that. Chris? I also don't drink coffee. <laughs> Holy sweet Lord. <laughs> how do y'all survive? Like, how do y'all do these watches then if you don't have coffee in your system? I make sure I get enough sleep. Okay. Point taken. What about you, Daryl? Do you have a favorite type of coffee? Uh, if we have... Any chocolate, I'll, uh, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll make a, a little bit of creamer or whole milk I'll add to coffee, and then sometimes I'll make it ice or warm, whatever, and then I can throw in a little bit of mocha into it. So I'll make it like a chocolate kind of coffee or iced coffee in this case. Really depends on if the coffee's cold, I might as well throw some ice in and make it colder. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm not, yeah, that does sound really good. Iced coffee, I do love me some iced coffee. Lynette, what's your favorite type of coffee? Or do you drink coffee? I do drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking coffee right now. Um, I usually just go for like plain black coffee. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't have to be fancy, but um, what is it like the sweet, vanilla cream Starbucks coffee. Luxurious. <laughs> if I'm really feeling like something fancy, that's what I go for. I remember when I was like 14, the greatest thing in the world was to get a Starbucks Frappuccino of some kind. And now that I'm older, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't. I can't with those. They're just too sweet. Yeah, I was feeling nostalgic like a year ago and I got one and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. It's too much. <laughs> So viewer online says Brazilian ice vanilla latte is their favorite. That sounds really, really good. Ren, I know, is allergic to coffee. I just found that out this morning. It's true. It's very sad. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. 
What about chocolate? Can you do chocolate? So is it the caffeine molecule itself? I have no idea, but thankfully I can eat chocolate. <laughs> I have a good friend of mine that doesn't drink coffee, but she eats chocolate That's every morning <coughs> to wake up. Dan, just, I don't know if you have time, but can you back up just a touch? I think we just ran over a black coral. I didn't see it till it was right at the bottom of the screen. It should be behind and to your right. Hello, uh, We don't need to stop the ship now. I'd rather, let's keep the motion. If you can look at it, that's fine. Let's keep going. I'll, we'll look for another one. It's boring enough out here. I don't want, there it is. Very bottom right. I think this is going to be a bathopathies. And then we don't need a long look at it. Just a snap zoom to confirm is fine. Yep, bathopathies. That's all we need. Thanks. And it got some kind of low chrysogorgia over here on the right, too. All right, we're, we're good, thanks. Vancouver, British Columbia says, iced Americano. That's... Yes, 100% agree on that. That sounds delicious. Mm. Something with zoanthids. <laughs> Steve says he thinks that was the white paragorgia we've been seeing that we sampled a couple dives ago. And that's what Steve said. Gorgia. This is our first one of, today, of this dive. This is a member of the family Chrysogorgia day. Um, and they're almost always seen with one of these um, Astroschema brittle stars here. This is definitely the first one we've seen of this dive, which is uh, this little burst of corals here is making me optimistic of what we might find when we get a little bit up higher on this feature. So we're, while we're coming up the west face of this very large geo that we've been on for the last better part of five days, um, <clears throat> we're coming up to a, a local high on the west flank um, where we'll probably end the dive when we get up and run the little small ridge line on the top. Uh, there's a big coral that kind of just came out of the gloom. <laughs> This looks like some type of bamboo, probably. So question online is, have we ever found any interesting cave formations down here, or caves in the deep sea? <laughs> uh, sorry, what was the question? 
I was looking there we were discussing this the branching pattern on this coral being unusual um, <laughs> and uh, we were joking about it the, there are two researchers who um, are known for their work describing b the bamboo taxonomy and they were <laughs> commenting it's their worst nightmare <laughs> uh, not sure if this question is more or less interesting than that, but we're good. Doing uh, things. Has have there ever been found any interesting cave formations found what down formations? in the deep sea? Cave formations, yeah. Cave. Um, I imagine somewhere, but prob but not out here. So caves are generally a sedimentary rock process, and so out here, the only kind of caves you would potentially find uh, would be lava tubes. Um, and so I don't know how much, I don't, I don't remember ever seeing like a giant gaping lava tube hole or anything out here, but in areas where you have submerged paleo shorelines, um, that have a lot of limestones and things like that, certainly there are, um, cave features, um, but generally they're in shallow water, um, just because of the sedimentary process and erosion that require, that creates them these hard rock, volcanic rocks out here. Um, like I said, lava tubes are really the only thing you would have a cave-like structure based on. Some kind of sponge here that may or may not be alive. Looks like another bamboo whip. So going back to the caves thing, I do know it was the year that COVID first was almost breaking out. So back in 2019, 2020-ish, uh, Nautilus explored some caves over in California. Oh, there we go. So. The primary focus of the cruise was to map the caves on Osborne Bank. Can we look at either of these corals if we've got time? Oh, this was during the ambassador program. looks like some type of Chrysogorgia. Yeah, definitely a type of Chrysogorgia. And it's got its associate squat lobster in there. We're good on that one, but if we can look at the one to the um, out of frame top left. Yeah, so this is that white morph paragorgia we've seen a couple times that often seems to have um, a few zoanthids colonizing it. So we collected this um, two dives ago, uh, and we, I think we've seen it one most on every dive. Looks like, nope, never mind, that's just a brittle star in a funny fashion. Never mind. I thought that thing on the top right was something unique, but I think it's just a brittle star. All right, thank you. Check a look at that, please. Mm. 
It's fine. There's another one right here, actually, to your left, if you want to go there instead. That sponge there. So this is a type of glass sponge. I'm not sure which family it is. I'd have to go look through the guides. Um, my sponge ID is poor. All right, we're good, thanks. But that should be enough of a shot to get, <coughs> to go back later when we're annotating and figure out exactly what it is. Steve's saying it's probably a poplagonid. Oh, polyopagon, I mean. How long does Steve stay on the chat for? Like, does he have a set amount of time? Like, no, 12 um, hours every day from 8 to 8. He joins as life allows. Dan, I'm not sure if you're at a place where you can answer this question, um, but a viewer online is wondering about the new installations to Hercules this year. Another Metallagorgia. These are one of the corals that are found more often on um, on flatter bits. So like out here, we generally expect to see a lot of the corals on slightly steeper terrain. Um, this coral seems to very much have found its niche on kind of flatter, more barren terrain. Not exclusively, you can see it sometimes in steeper terrains, um, but as a general rule, we see it in kind of flatter places. Hey, science is happy whenever a video is done with a beta shot. We look at either of these. Uh, I can't tell yet. Probably both. We're going to be losing a lot of our shoreside support next week um, because of the, it's the International Symposium on Deep Sea Corals in Edinburgh, Scotland, and so. Most of our shoreside scientists will be all descending on Scotland at the conference next week and won't be able to pay attention. Okay, that's the same Paragorgia. All right, thanks. Corley. Yeah, sorry, I'm having monitor issues. Leela did a training for back row the other day. We now have the power. <laughs> and I just, I just, so Chris, Chris, what is one thing that you want to really like find down here? Your mind would be blown if you've seen it. Brian had the octopus. I've got a Dumbo squid or a Dumbo octopus laying an egg. What's yours, Chris? Uh, my mind is pretty blown already. 
<laughs> All right, that's the same thing. Can we look at the anemone, though, to the right before we leave that is probably an anemone, but could be a cow coral? I would really like to see a deep sea vent, though. I think that'd be really cool. Well, on this cruise, I would, too, because that would be the cover <laughs> of science. Right. Um, <laughs> All right, thank you. That's all I need. This area is currently believed to be pretty tectonically dormant. And so seeing any kind of active tectonic processes or hints of um, activity like hot water vents or methane seeps or carbon dioxide seeps or anything out here would be uh, very exciting because it would be very unexpected. Online viewer from Scotland says they are from the next city over uh, from Glasgow. So next we can go check out all the deep sea coral experts. Coralie, what is one thing that would, it would blow your mind if you saw it down here? And for you, would it be like a cool rock? It would probably be like Atlantis or something. Oh, high standards. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, they did find the yellow brick road here last year. They did, yes. This looks like another anthropotherian of some type, probably, um, probably bathopathies. Yep. So this is a black coral, anthropotherian. Um, one of the more common black corals we see out here. with the little baby crinoid um, in the top left behind it. All right, science is happy, thank you. So in my personal opinion, I feel that Amelia Earhart, Amelia Earhart is now like the queen of Atlantis. And that was like the whole thing. Her plane crashed, she was on the island and the Atlantis people like took her in and were like, you are now our queen. In some way, you ever read anything by the <laughs> author? Have you ever read anything by the author Christopher Moore? No. Yeah, I know exactly. He has a, a comedy <laughs> book where that basically is the plot line. Yeah, it's really good. It's hilarious. The book is called Fluke, and I don't know if I've ever laughed so hard reading a book. Fluke. Christopher Moore? Yep. This is a very... Uh, hold on, actually. I like how <laughs> when you, it has like all the different genres. So it's fantasy and... Right? Marine biologist in midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a baby umbilical too. Actually, Dan, there looks like there might be, can you kind of zoom out and pan right? Fantasy yep. fiction with social Yeah, commentary. stop the ship. We're gonna probably sample one or two things here. Well, that was 100% Steve caught it. Steve, from shore. I missed it. So we believe this to be probably part of the skull, a fossilized part of a skull of some type of whale is probably what we're looking at here. It's ferromanganese encrusted, so you know it's super Very old. Very old, yep. 
Whoa, so that is, do we take that fossil with us? We're talking about it. So how old do you think that whale skull would be if it's already pharaoh encrusted? Like millions of years? Probably. Wow. So that might even be before whales, right? I don't know my how long whales have been on this planet. I'm going to assume like... I don't know. It kind of, I mean, it kind of depends how thick the crust is, but just having any sort of coating of crust just proves that it is very old. And we also want to collect that sea pen um, that we were, that we originally landed at. So what sample number is this going to be, Chris? This will be 062. You should probably put it where in something where there's nothing, like in one of the small boxes, and then don't put anything else in that box. Then go to the forward starboard bio box. Uh, Dan, can you give it a spin when you get a chance, please? So what caught your eye as letting you think that this was a whale fossil? Uh, Steve from shore saw it. Um, I missed it 100%. I wasn't, just didn't have the search image for it. Um, but uh, I don't know how to, I'm not even sure how to describe it. It just doesn't look, the, the, ang the angles are wrong. Like everything we've seen around here is, um, A, got the botryoidal crust on mm -hmm. it that's exposed and so it's been ex you know exposed longer everything else has got rounded edges and is kind of low bait and this is a long linear feature um, with different striations it just looks different do you think it could be like a piece of wood or it's got to be a bone uh, it could I mean could I don't be, think you would get yeah. it you wouldn't but wood wouldn't be lasted long. Wouldn't last long enough down here to get manganese encrusted. So the fact that it's black means that it's something that has a, a longer residence time. Oh, so cool! Yeah, and the more we look at this, the more convinced um, we all are. Um, that it is probably the lower jaw of some type of beaked whale, most likely. All right, I think we've got the images we need, if you want to stow it. Did you say a beaked whale? Beaked whale, whale probably. Uh, Potentially a dolphin. Whale. Some some kind of ad adonisite or tooth, tooth whale in some form or fashion. Roger. Yeah, they're all open, so forward or aft is a good. Chris, you can't hear you say that again. Oh, uh, either one, forward or aft of the big boxes are good. Take that megalodon tooth. I think we just one-upped you. Steve, this is the sea pen you were interested in still. Zero six
All right, and this is not the C pen we were looking at. So no, no more samples here. We can get back underway. So part of the discussion in the chat was um, marine mam uh, about sampling that or not was marine mammals are protected under a whole bunch of um, different regulations in the U.S. primarily the Marine Mammal Protection Act um, and even having um, skeletal remains or something that was obviously long dead um, is still protected and requires special permitting. So we had to double check um, what the rules say on collecting those, and because it's fossilized, it is not um, under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. And so we're able to collect that even though we don't have specific permits uh, for marine mammal takes. See, brown manganese crust comes in really useful. <laughs> <laughs> So a viewer online says that they found a similar beaked whale specimen back in November 2021. Google. So for those of you who wanted a whale fall. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I see a person who typed in about the beaked whale in 2021. Oh, that doesn't help me out. Okay, so looking at last year's expedition, they did find that beaked whale bone, and it does look very similar. Good catch, online viewer. Corley, will you remind me, what is the rate of um, accretion or accumulation of ferromanganese on a um, deep sea item? Rock, whale bone, I don't know what else, seashell. The average is one to 10 millimeters per million years. So it's kind of a wide range. Wait, one to 10 millimeters? Yes. Okay. Per million, okay. Yeah, sorry. A long amount of time. So you could get up to a centimeter. So it's unknown. There's definitely not a centimeter of ferromanganese crust on that. So it's possible it's less than a million years, but it could be up to a million years. Wow. Old. When did whales first evolve out? So whales, it's saying, thanks to Dr. Google, evolved out 50 million years ago. And then the Odontocetes evolved out around 43 million years ago. So 
So they are a lot older than I was previously expecting. I was thinking only like one million years. It's pretty amazing when you think about something like that just sitting on the seafloor exposed, though. Like if it was buried yeah. in sediment or whatever, it wouldn't it wouldn't pick up the manganese crust? Um, so that has been sitting out on the seamount in some form or fashion for exposed for that long. For like 45 million years. Jeez. It gives you a, a sense of how slow the sedimentation rate is out here. I mean, I'm sure the current was helping it clear, clean and stuff like that, but sediment accumulates um, in these areas extremely slowly. So then my next question would be like, well, what caused that animal to die 45, 50 million years ago? Was it predation? Was it natural effect? Was it a full grown whale? Did it have something wrong with it? Was there some kind of incident in the water where it just couldn't make it? So if that well skull was about 45 million years, and these rocks are 80 to 100 million years from volcanic activity. Uh, I don't know if, I would say they're around like 80 million years. I don't know if I'd go up to 100 million years yet, just because uh, none of the rocks that have been um, dated in this area kind of go above that. I know looking at the expedition plan from like way back when, said 81 to 86 million years of old. So these seamounts would have potentially been out of the water, exposed when this little beaked whale was swimming around. Another bathopathies there on the bottom right. We don't need to take a zoom on it. Nope. But thanks, I hadn't seen it until you started poking around for it. A Seinfeld fan saying that the beaked whale reminds them of an episode where George Costanza fakes being an oceanographer to impress a girl. No. <laughs> I have just recently started watching Seinfeld. It is so funny and I feel like it still holds up like so many of the episodes. Like sometimes I watch Friends and I'm like, ooh, maybe that's not quite too funny anymore. But I feel like for Seinfeld, so many of it, I'm like, oh, that's genius. I feel like Friends still holds up. I mean, there's valid criticisms for all for all, all all things, yeah. but. Can we look at one of the two purpley orby things? So the head writer for Seinfeld still has a TV show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. So sting of funny. That is so, that is such a good show. This is another one of those little, little Chrysogorgias we've been seeing. There it is, yeah, that's the same thing. Yep, thanks. I like the recent episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where he finds out that if he puts on a certain baseball hat, it can get him like out of certain social situations. Thought it was <sighs> the funniest thing. I watched it on a subreddit the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Okay, also I was wrong. There are some seamounts that are dated back to 120 years, but those are kind of far away from where we are. Whoa. 
Corley, do you want to tell us a little bit about kind of the confusion about Line Island's geologic history? Yeah, so if you if you think about plate tectonics, the way we think about, or like a hotspot, the way we think about Hawaii, there's a very clear age progression between the different islands and seamounts in the Hawaiian Ember Seamount chain. So you would expect the line islands, um, since these seamounts are kind of similar, to have a similar age progression, where you'd have the youngest kind of at the bottom and then the oldest at the top. However, that's not actually what you see. Kind of see this intermingling of different ages all within the region. Um, if you guys want to look up, it's open access. Rob Pacalny has a paper from 2021, um, multiple melt source origin of the Line Islands, Pacific Ocean, um, where they kind of try to use the age dates and some modeling um, and some geochemistry, um, seafloor bathymetry to try and figure out what what is causing the Line Islands. Um, pretty much we don't know exactly what it is, but um, it could be hotspot, it could be um, leaky transform faults. Uh, they give a couple of different uh, theories on what it could be, but it's a very uh, tectonically enigmatic region. So but how will the rocks that we find here kind of help figure out and solve this enigma? Well, hopefully we find some nice basalts with some crystals. So Amber Cervolo is a scientist ashore um, who's been to this region with me last year. So just being able to date some of the rocks will be very useful um, because we don't have that many samples from, because this, so here's the other thing with the issue with dating is that you need to have kind of fresh samples where you can see, have minerals and see minerals um, to be able to date them. If they're too altered, then they're not good for dating. And because this region is fairly old, um, that is an issue that we're running into where some of these samples are too too old and altered and so you can't date them. But if we can get some more fresh samples, being able to date more regions in this area would be very useful. So collect more rocks is what we're saying. <laughs> collect more of a specific type of rock Angular cantaloupe sized rocks? Exactly. None of those stinking sedimentary rocks. Yeah. Man, when they, when they no cut those, those rocks off, when we they cut a rock open and find that sedimentary, just the look of disgust <laughs> on Adam and Coralie's face. <laughs> Ugh, it's not basalt. <laughs> Throw it overboard. I, <laughs> from the last, di not this last dive uh, yesterday, but what was that, two days ago or something? Three days? I can't even remember. Um, I was describing some rocks, and one of them was sedimentary, and I'm like, no one's ever going to use this rock, and everyone's <laughs> just like, throw it overboard. <laughs> it's taking up space. S says the hard rock geologist, the sedimentary process people will be so excited to see it. <laughs> I know. For any sedimentary people, it did kind of look like a conglomerate rock that was in the process of being kind of solidified into rock, but it was still really crumbly, but it had a bunch of pebbles in it. Yeah, someone's gonna get mad at me for suggesting we throw that overboard. How long does it take for a sedimentary rock to become an actual rock instead of just this crumbly, pebbly thing that you were just describing? Millions of years. <laughs> <laughs> I think it kind of depends. So that was a beautiful Carl Sagan voice, like millions and millions of years. <laughs> Need some ballast.
So to the viewer online that's wondering what happened to the purple orb, good question. And it's still a question. We're still trying to figure it out. There's two different like hard schools of camps on what it could possibly be. And the answer is, we don't know. It's a mystery still. Yeah, we'll keep, we'll take it as a sample. If he, if he picks it up, we'll take it all the way to the surface and and count as a sample. What's this little thing crawling out from underneath the rock? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you guys remember those old school claw games from like Walmart? Where it was like you would waste all your money trying to grab that one little plushy stuffed animal? Yeah, so I actually used to be really good at those when I was a kid. <laughs> I used to actually win the claw machine quite a bit, which was weird. I haven't played the claw machine in so long because I'm worried I've lost my touch. <laughs> you want to go down as the reigning champion? Yeah. You don't want to test it out? But I was also very careful. There's like a way there's a way you play the claw machine. You don't go for the stuffed animal you want, you go for the stuffed animal that you know you can get. So you had a whole bunch of like weird stuffed animals, the ones that have been in there for twenty years? Yeah. Well not twenty years, because you want the ones that are like right on top. Okay, there's that thing. What is that? That little yellowy thing? No, there's so next to like right on the side of the screen, there's like a st some sort of star and then next to it right here. It's squall lobster. Okay, thank you. All right, we're, science is good. <laughs> 